Let's quickly do a farm review over anticoagulants. The prefix anti means against, so we are working against coagulation, and that's just a fancy way of talking about the body's ability to form a clot. We're going to affect that process. Now medications in this medication class include heparin, low molecular weight heparin, which is anoxaparin, warfarin, and rivaroxaban. So what are these medications going to treat? Well, they're gonna treat conditions that have issues with clots. For instance, like pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, atrial fibrillation, or after surgery to prevent clots from forming, like those surgeries where you unfortunately have the risk of clots developing, like hip and knee surgery, and whenever a patient's had a myocardial infarction or they're experiencing unstable angina. And how these medications work is that they're gonna stop, hence really slow down the coagulation process, the body's ability to clot by interrupting the clotting cascade process. Now, one important thing to remember about this class of medications is that they do not dissolve or bust up existing clots. Clots. They're just going to really prevent those existing clots from growing and getting bigger or new ones from forming. Now there are side effects to these medications and it's because we are affecting that coagulation process. So big side effects come from bleeding and bruising. They can also upset the stomach causing nausea and vomiting. Plus warfarin for instance can affect the bones leading to osteoporosis. So if your patient's on warfarin you want to monitor their bone health and these medications can lead to hair loss. Loss. Now, what is the nurse's role with this medication class? Well, one big thing is that you want to be monitoring for bleeding. And there's various tests that you can look at that will tell you, hey, your patient may have bleeding or certain signs and symptoms that tells you we got bleeding. So one thing is that you want to monitor that complete blood count that will be ordered by the healthcare provider. And you want to be looking at certain parts of that CBC. One thing is the hemoglobin and hematocrit. Look at the patient's levels over time. And if they're trending downward that tells you hey you may have some bleeding somewhere even though you don't see some outward bleeding there may be some bleeding inside in addition if your patient is taking heparin you want to also look at the platelet level on that cbc and make sure that those platelets aren't just trending downward because it could mean that your patient has heparin induced thrombocytopenia which could lead to them actually having an increase in coagulation Plus, you want to monitor the PTT level as well. And then on the flip side with warfarin, you want to monitor the PTI and R level. So heparin is PTT level and warfarin is PTI and R level. Also, you just want to assess your patient for bleeding. So you looked at all those results, then you want to take a look at your patient. So some places that that blood can be can be in the urine and it can cause the urine just to turn this very light pink severe bleeding would be like just full-on red urine you also want to look at their stool is it getting dark and sticky and look at their gums see if they have any oozing in their mouth and assess them for pain particularly in the head or the stomach that could mean that we have some bleeding there and look at their vital signs a decreasing blood pressure, hypotension with an increasing heart rate, tachycardia, that is a big sign that your patient may be bleeding out somewhere. And then if your patient still has menstruation, assess if their periods are heavy. Okay, so that wraps up this video over cardiac medications. If you'd like to watch more videos in this pharmacology series, you can access the link below.